I want to speak today about the myth of being ready. This will be the first miracle that Jesus has committed turning water into wine. This is a picture of the gospel because Jesus takes religion and turns it into relationship where there's joy, where there's fulfillment. The law took water and turned it into blood in Egypt. Jesus takes water and turns it into wine. And so that's a beautiful picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I would like to take it an application from it that applies to us as the church, applies to us as members, applies to us as visitors and as guests of hungry generation. John, gospel of John chapter 2. It says the following. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of the wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. So this wedding runs out of the wine and the mother of Jesus comes to him and says they have no wine. The Bible makes us to understand in Gospel of Matthew chapter 9 that the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. So God is running out of workers in the same way the feast ran out of wine. There was a shortage of wine in the feast but the Bible tells us there is a shortage of workers in God's field as well. And today the church, the mother, is, is making a call to every believer and saying, hey, the harvest has a shortage of laborers. The same way the mother looked to Jesus and says, hey, they have no wine. Today I have a proclamation is the father who is not just the father of the house. He's the Lord of the harvest and he's making a call. He says the laborers are few but the harvest is plentiful. Meaning the world is ready to be ripe. The world is ready to be saved. But he says, I am recruiting. I am asking for people to rise up and fill the shortage. Now, of course, the response of Jesus is the response of every person in this room. That's not my problem. And this is not, I do not want to belittle the son of most high God. But Jesus replied back to her and he said to her, um, woman, only Jesus can get away with calling his mom woman. What does this concern have to do with me? Not my wedding, not my problem. And... Then he says, my hour hasn't come yet. We'll touch that in a moment. It's not my problem. It's not my wedding. And maybe today you feel exactly the same way about reaching the world for Christ. Vlad, that's cool. That's awesome. That's for people like you who get paid to be a Christian. But it's not for me. It's not my job. It's not my problem. And if God has a problem of reaching unreached world parts, if God has that problem, well, that is his problem but that's not mine. If you're taking notes, write this down. Even if it's not your problem, it is your responsibility. It is your purpose. It was not Jesus's problem that the fact they ran out of wine, but it was his purpose of being on this earth to demonstrate the glory of God. The world is not your problem, but it is your purpose. You were born again for the purpose of not just warming a church pew. You were born again with the purpose not just to keep and maintain your salvation until the second coming of Jesus. You were saved, delivered and healed not only so that you can finally have a job of your dreams, have a house of your dreams, go on the vacation of your dreams and have an RV, have a boat, have a dog and then do a retire at the age of 60. That is not the purpose of life. The purpose of life is to please him who enlisted us and so it might not be your problem but my friend every each one of us have a purpose and it is our purpose amen I'm so glad Jesus looked at my sin and didn't say not my problem I'm so glad when I was headed straight into hell and Jesus didn't say well not my problem that was his decision that got him there you know I warned him he knew better it wasn't his problem that I was going to hell. It wasn't God's problem that you were disobedient, rebellious and served the devil blindly full of deceit. Jesus came down on earth and said, no, it's not my problem, but it is my purpose. My friend, you may feel like I'm not qualified. This is not for me to do all of this, winning the lost and praying and fasting and engaging with the mission of Jesus Christ for me. That's just not my problem. It is your purpose. 
and if you don't buy into this purpose today if you don't subscribe to this purpose if you don't get entangled and get yourself wrapped up with this purpose if everyone does that there will be a lot of blood on our hands on the judgment seat there are people who will be saved because we said yes the same way you are saved because Jesus said yes the difference between us and Jesus is it's not our yes that saves people but it is our yes that delivers the salvation Jesus paid for to them and lack of that yes is going to cause a lot of people not to meet Jesus Christ lack and my addiction to my comfort my addiction to my you know the way kind of my life is already the college the school the, the ministry and all of that but if the mission of Jesus Christ is not the most important thing I have responsibility to the Lord because he saved me with a purpose with an assignment amen the second thing that I want to mention from this one is I'm not ready Jesus says my time has not come yet so first he's like it's not my problem but it is my purpose so I'm going to be involved in this the second one is it's not my time I'm not ready for this even if you're not ready you're still responsible it might not be God's will it might not be God's time for you right now to be involved fully in God's commission but it is still God's will for you this is what I hear a lot of people say the moment they hear anything about starting a life group evangelizing to others and this is what people a lot of times Christians say well this is not for me but you're a Christian but you're a disciple it might not be your time but it does not mean it's not your responsibility don't confuse God's will with God's time you might be hurting right now emotionally you might just gotten saved so it's not your time you might have came out or going through deliverance so it's not your time to go disciple other people hundred percent you need to wait for it but do not ever say things like it's not for me because it's not my time be honest with yourself and say you know what I'm hurt I, I burned out I went from another church maybe there where the leadership was toxic or perhaps I had a really bad experience somebody dumped me somebody threw me under the bus I, I involved I poured myself into this person and they back things backfired and you know what it's not my time right now but it is still my responsibility and I do my, see myself doing it maybe not next month maybe not even next year but I can tell you count me in don't count me out why just because it's not my time it does not mean God's will change with not my time it's still God's will even if it's not God's time for you and Jesus did not say I'm not gonna do it he just said it's not my time I'm just not ready for that right now there's something about not being ready is that you're never ready have you noticed how in the next verse it's not my time and he went and did the miracle because that's how time of God changes your mama can change your time Jesus' mama said hey Jesus uh, all this whole time thing I don't understand it they need they have a problem and you can do something about it could you please do it Jesus is like not my time and he's like I don't understand this stuff she gets the servant she's like hey guys just be ready any moment and Jesus pretty much goes in and switches the time switched nothing really changed except th there was a need and Jesus adjusted that time and he went and started serving a lot of people have to understand you'll never be ready to serve there's no such a thing as I'm ready you always become ready as you obey God when I was called to preach at the very tender age of 14 years of age my pastor told me that I need to preach was I ready of course not but I did not wait he did not wait for me to get ready do you know how I got ready by preaching now most of you were not here so I just want to give huge thank you to every person who suffered through my preaching <laughs> for 10 years and you did not lose your Christianity I just want to say thank you there is a great reward for you in heaven the need can change God's time the myth of when I am ready then I'm going to do it at the age of 16 so at the age of 14 I started to preach was I ready no now the church was so small so the damage was very limited 
plus my pastor was there and he would always correct anything I would say off you know he would get up and say well that's not actually what the Bible says I'm like I thought it did I saw somebody said on TBN and so he's like TBN is not the Bible and so and then he would he would bring correction was I ready no but at the same time was there a need yeah and I couldn't say well I'm not ready for this there was a need and when, when you might not be a great swimmer but if somebody's drowning you don't say well I'm gonna take swimming lessons and go and help them it's gonna be too late you go and you help the best you know how. If there's somebody starving, you say, well, I'm not a chef. I don't have education on that. Same thing with having children. Were you ready to have children? Most of you know. Because your kids are seeing still a counselor. And some of the decisions parents made, were they ready? No. But that's how you learn to be a great parent is sometimes having children. Were you ready to get married? For those people who thought they were ready, you were not ready. And those of you who got married and honestly you were not really ready but as long as you're obedient to God's word and you're repentant and you're taking some classes and everything next thing that happens is that you grew you definitely was a jerk before but now you're semi Jesus like a little closer to Jesus and you're doing great job you get ready through the process of marriage you don't get ready by just going to a marriage university I under no circumstances want to downplay preparing yourself but there is this idea of once I get ready at the age of 16 I became a youth pastor was I ready to be a youth pastor no I didn't even want to be a youth pastor it happened because the guy before me quit after six months and then the guy after him quit after six months and there was nobody else left so a lot of times I, we don't do things because well you know I felt the call of God upon my life well there was a need and even though I wasn't ready not my time mom but sometimes God will use the pastor he will use the leader who will say you know what forget about your time there is a world to save and then I want you to engage with that mission and as you engage with that mission God will prepare you God will mature you and God will strengthen you and God will develop you I remember when I felt the call of God I told my pastor I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna get the proper training like every pastor in town and pastor says you're not gonna be like every pastor in town and he says I want you to train differently I want you to be engaged with the mission he says we have a need if you go to university for four years what do you think we're gonna pause the church and stop because of great anointed Vladimir went to university and you're gonna come back with brains bigger than this building and now you're gonna what cast out demons because they're gonna teach you then college pastor said no he says we have a need and the need is more important I want you to serve I want you to read books I want you to take classes and as you say yes to God he begins to develop and prepare you for the very thing you went into not being ready for God will mature you through your obedience but devil will keep you in immaturity due to your, due to your excuses you have to be mature to get married and you have to get married to be mature. Only married people just understood what I said. The single of you are like, what? You just contradicted yourself. That's exactly the beauty of marriage. You have to be mature to get married and you have to get married to be mature. Certain maturity you have to have in your life to go into marriage. Same thing is with ministry. You have to have maturity, you have to have foundation which is why we have the destiny training. But there is maturity you will never get in a university. There is maturity you will never get in your mom's house as long as she does your laundry and cooks for you. And as long as they take care of you. There is maturity you will only get when you have to pay your own bills, you have to do your own laundry and you have to find your own food. And once you get married there is a maturity. You thought you had maturity. You thought that you could get along with your mama and your sisters. You thought you could get along with your dad and with your brothers. You're like man I got this until you get married. You're like man I was totally immature. Marriage will mature you. Same thing with ministry. If you wait until you get a degree, if you wait until you go to a seminary, cemetery, uh, if, you, if you wait when you go through training, if you wait, you know what, I'm gonna wait for 20 years, all of these issues will be solved and then I will be ready to serve. My friend, that is not how ministry works. Disciples did not wait for all of the stuff. They start serving. serving. You, you can steer a parked car. God can mature you through obedience and if he calls you to witness to your friend you don't tell that friend can you hold on why I need to go through evangelism, evangelism classes no you obey God and God matures you you obey God and God develops you the same thing we mature in marriage the same way we mature in ministry and so I want to challenge those people in here today who say I am not ready to tell you you're probably more ready than you realize 
because if you would use that idea in marriage you would have never been married if you would have used that idea in building a house like Victoria Victoria is not a contractor she didn't say well I'm not ready for the house why I don't know how to build a house how many of you have a house and you don't know how to fix things in the house don't raise your hand right now <laughs> a lot of us but you still buy a house how many of you here today you have children but honestly you're not an expert on child rising rising children raising your children you're not an expert how many of you here are married but you're not a counselor how many of us here today we make food but we're not a chef so for those of you who are like you need to be a professional no 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 in the kingdom you don't need to be professional to make disciples you just need to be humble and obedient that's it now there will be professionals but the rest of us we're not the elites we're just everyone who are obedient to the Lord there will be professionals but we're not the professionals we are the obedient and so if you're making excuses today that I don't want to do this I don't want to be involved in that because it's not for me it's not because you're not professional it's because you're lazy and you're making excuses if you become obedient to God God will develop your maturity God will develop your gifts and people will call you professional and you will like no I'm not I'm just trying to be obedient people will look at me they're like man you're such a great pastor I was like no I was like I'm totally not the type of pastor I'm like I'm not even comfortable with the name pastor and stuff but because my whole life was never about being professional my whole life was about being obedient just obey and then God matures you obey and God develops you and the, the last thing that I want to share is with those people who feel like they are ready you know what I'm ready for ministry those people they scare me it's that 16 year old that comes in and tells you that he's ready for marriage you're like no you're not it's your nine-year-old kid comes in and says mom I'm ready for my car you're like no you're not he's just got out of diapers you're ready for raking leaves you're ready to go play with the dog but you're not ready for the car one day you will be ready it's still God's will for you to drive a car it's just not God's time for you to drive a car this is what God does with this example of wine there's two there's, there's two ways to make wine the first one is the natural one it's when you take water no 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 that's not natural one actually it's totally I was just seeing if you're paying attention the first one is grapes you take grapes and then you have to crush them and then you know they go through a time of um, ferm fermentation and then after a while they become wine we don't drink uh, wine at the church so I brought juice and uh, so grapes turn into wine with time that's a natural process but there's one thing you can't become wine because you're a grape grape has whatever what it takes to be wine there are people in this room under the sound of my voice who naturally by God's grace you're gifted with leadership abilities you're gifted with a prophetic insight you're a smart person you are you have what it takes to be who God wants you to be and that is your biggest problem why because you think because you have grapes you will be wine but there's only one secret where grapes become wine is through being crushed and you hate that and the reason why you feel like you don't need crushing is because you're so gifted all you need is become bigger grape if I could just make these grapes bigger but the problem the more you leave grapes on the sun they become raisins not wine gifted people who are not broken become raisins instead of wine what becomes out of us is this not wine we're not used by God the way God wants us to be in fact we become frustrated with God why I have everything it takes to be used by God and I'm not being used by him because the son of time the son of pride the son of I don't want my life to be broken fasting is not for me why I'm too gifted why but humbling myself is not for me I don't need a pastor to submit to that stuff is not for me and you will remain a raisin instead of being the wine that God wants you to be for people like me it's a little bit easier 
because I am not a grape I'm a water I don't have what it takes to be a wine I don't have the looks to be wine I don't have the English to be a wine have you noticed how many mistakes I made in just 30 minutes I don't have what it takes I don't now I can improve on my water and purify it and make it coconut water and vitamin water but I wasn't born as a grape but see what I love about the story of water into wine is that Jesus says I can take somebody I gifted naturally as long as they go through breaking I will make him into something great but the Lord also says I'm looking for people who are born on the wrong side of the track I'm looking for people everybody told you you don't have what it takes to be successful you don't have what it takes to be used by God you don't look right you don't talk right you don't have this you don't have that your mama was this your daddy was that you made some mistakes in your past and Jesus says give me some of that water because I can turn water it does not have what it takes to be wine into wine come on somebody Maybe you're here today and you're like, I don't have what it takes to be a leader. I don't have what it takes to be a preacher of the gospel. I don't have what it takes to pray for the sick. I don't have what it takes. I'm so shy and timid. I cannot talk to my neighbors about Christ. I cannot talk to my friends about Jesus. I don't have what it takes. My friend, first miracle of Jesus is to take water and turn it into something that naturally that's not possible. How can God take a guy who is so shy to speak in front of a group of people because I was that water. I had no natural abilities. I didn't have what it takes to be a preacher of the gospel. But that's exactly what Jesus wanted. He took water and he made it into wine. And then he will take grape. And the moment you think you have what it takes, he will crush and then he'll make you. Moses thought he had what it takes. He went and killed a guy in Egypt. He's like, I got what it takes. I got the punch. I can hit like Muhammad Ali. I got the education. I was trained at the best universities. I'm the right guy for the job. And then God says, not really. He says, there's only one way. I take a grape into wine is I have to crush you and 40 years of crushing until when God came and says, you're ready. Moses says, no, I'm not. I can't speak no I'm not I'm not the guy why I don't know how to do anything God I am nothing why because when a man is crushed God says now I can use you maybe you are here today and you feel like I have what it takes I am gifted I am anointed why is that church not recognizing the anointing of God upon my life because my friend you're just a grape turning into a raisin and God wants to use the grape to go through breaking God wants your will to be broken God wants your heart to be broken God wants you to be a submissive person God wants you to be a serving person God wants you to be a person who goes through a crushing goes through a breaking I'm not talking about abuse I'm not talking about something somebody you know fight violating your will but I'm talking about you denying yourself because today I am on the other side where in certain areas I am gifted when we started this year one of the reasons that we went for an extended period of fasting is because after a while I don't want to be a glorious grape I don't want to be a person that people look at me and say well wow look he has what it takes I said God take every grape and break it break my will that's why you will see me crying on the, on the carpet at Friday night prayers and stuff so because I know that what I have right now is also God's blessing to some degree but God has to break that if God wants to do something supernatural that I will never be able to get the glory from that's why at the end of this miracle the Bible says and Jesus revealed his glory I don't want people to see the grape I want people to see the glory and for them to see the glory this guy has to be broken the self in me has to die on the cross and for us to go from the grape to be a wine you have to not just come to the cross and receive forgiveness you have to get on the cross and receive sanctification you don't just come to Jesus to discover who you are you have to come to Jesus and deny who you are come on somebody are you with me the Lord wants to take the grape and he wants to crush it may your legacy not be raisins died gifted but also completely not used by God. Why? Because the sun dried you up. And yes, raisins are still good, but it's not what the Lord intended. May I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be a person that you and I are water. If you are water, God wants to turn you into wine. If you are grapes, God wants to turn you into wine. If you are grapes, there's only one secret. God has to break you. Your will has to be broken. It happens through prayer. It happens through fasting. It happens through submission. And it happens through doing things that honestly you don't really like. That's, that's crushing. It's when you come in and you realize 
that position they give you at church is way smaller than the anointing you got but you don't concern yourself with that you concern yourself make sure that your character is not smaller than your anointing that's what you concern yourself with make sure that your integrity is greater than your influence that's what you concern yourself with waters I have an instruction for you if you are here today and you are water there's only one secret the question is not whether you have what it takes the question is whether you are willing to do what he says what did Jesus what did mother of Jesus told the servants she told them this do what he says doesn't make sense are you gonna do what he says I'm not the right person for a job are you gonna do what it says I don't feel adequate are you gonna do what it says I can't speak are you gonna do what, it, what I say God looks at Moses I, 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 I stutter God says I know are you gonna do what I say are you gonna go to Pharaoh because God will take a person who doesn't have what it takes who's willing to do whatever he says and he'll turn water into wine and people will look at that person and say there is no way on earth there is no factory there is no university there is no skill that this thing can turn into this it's supernatural but there is a secret to this supernatural and the secret is this when you don't have what it takes you have to do whatever he says then God will supernaturally change your personality God will supernaturally endow you with gifts God will begin to use you in a way that the servants looked back and the Bible says and the servants knew how the water turned into wine and everyone in the wedding wondered the master of the wedding had a degree on how to run weddings but he was clueless about the miracle power of God happening under his nose why were servants knew it the master had the knowledge but the servants had the experience why because servants don't question the orders of Jesus Christ Jesus never used the master to make the water into wine because he would google it and say Jesus are you sure that's not how the wine is made Jesus this is water water doesn't turn into wine like that Jesus you're doing it the wrong way but the servants don't ask questions they just obey are you willing to be an obedient servant I don't care if you have more degrees than a thermometer I don't care if you have more a greater position everybody in Trace Cities knows you or it doesn't matter today if honestly you fail more than you can count and you have accepted yourself as a labor as a loser and as a person who's simply not gonna amount to anything the question is not whether you have what it takes but do you have the ability to do what he says if you do he will make miracles out of you the question is not are you able but are you available the question is not are you a leader are you willing to labor the question is not do you have the right skills are you able to be a servant and the question is not even are you educated with knowledge the real question is are you equipped with obedience don't worry about the fact that you don't have what it takes be willing to do whatever he says I'm a living testimony and hundreds of people in this room the only way to be used by God to reach people and make disciples heal the sick and cast out devils if you are wine if you are grapes you're gonna have to be crushed not by the pastor but by your surrender to God's will your gift is not enough your gift will put you in the room it'll never break the yoke your gift can make you popular but it will make you never make you a threat in the kingdom of darkness your gift can give you book deals and can give you connections but your gift will never intimidate the prince of darkness what does that is when a gift goes through crushing when through fasting through self-denial through obedience to God you're letting this precious grape and say God I don't want to be a grape I want to be a wine break me Lord when you pray that prayer be willing for God to give you opportunities where you have to say no to yourself and yes to your wife or yes to other people and your will will be broken you're like man I don't want to do this but the will is be broken even Jesus the Messiah had to go through crushing to become the wine the salvation for us the same principle is going to be for you and me but maybe you're on the other side today and you come in and you're like Vlad I don't need to go through crushing my life is already crushed I am broken to pieces how the Lord wants to use you is to remind you you might you might have been born with water the Lord will still use you if you stop focusing on the fact that you don't have what it takes 
but focus on the fact you are willing to do whatever he says if you're willing to do that God will do wonders he will raise you as a leader he will raise you as a disciple he will raise you as an influencer for your family and friends I'm not talking about being famous but you will be fruitful but you will be a person that God will use mightily in this world in Jesus name if you are a grape but you don't want to be a grape you want to be wine you want to be broken but you need God's help to be broken I'm not talking about you start doing something stupid right now uh, but I'm talking about you you surrendering to the to the will of God and saying God not my will but your will be done it's not what I want but it's what you want the second category of people you are so chronically shy timid and insecure and you don't have what it takes honestly you're like water you're like there is no way God can use somebody like me I want you to make your way make your way out of your out of your seat right now and I want you to come and stand here we're gonna pray with you if you are a grape and you want to be wine or if you are water and you're like man I need God's grace I need God's anointing I'm willing to do whatever it takes to obey God I'm willing to do whatever it takes to serve God come to the altar come to the Holy Spirit break your will like Mary broke the alabaster box break your pride break your self-will your stubbornness and say God not my will but your will be done it's not what I want it's what you want for me I will do whatever I have to do to please you God and I ask you that you will change me I ask you that you will transform me use me God let my legacy not be that I was a Christian let my legacy be that I was a follower of Jesus that I followed the lamb wherever the lamb went we love you Jesus we praise you God.